we're right off of the St. John's River, and I'm actually in someone's backyard. The Rutt family allowed us into their backyard, and I want to show you just how massive this is. This is actually grass that I'm standing on right now, and if you look to your right, you see the St. John's River right in front of you. It's another step moving in the right direction towards getting body cameras. But when it happens, you know, body cameras typically about this size, maybe one to three inches. And once they finally have them, it will capture everything along the way. See it right here. Let's take a look. And this is in the living room, partially in the kitchen. And you can see just how that tree came through and destroyed the midsection of their roof. Drugs have been a problem there for years. Janice? They were not surprised by the arrest, Joy. In fact, I'm standing on Main Street. It's a street that in these 100 plus pages of police reports, it proves that Main Street is known as a place where you can go and buy or sell drugs. It's within these woods that they have been searching throughout the entire day, looking for that 20 year old University of North Florida student. We had a chance to talk with the family earlier today. They say that they are still full of hope, but they are exhausted. It's been told it's going to take approximately six hours to get this mammal out in a very unusual space. Normally they migrate south during this time of year, but as you can see, an entire crew is here. They do plan on doing some construction to break up a part of the ground so that the manatee can then swim a little further up and then extract the manatee out from up under the ground. But again, this could take about six hours. Tark, yes, I spoke with Donnie Hafe, who says he lived with the gentleman Kyle Benjamin. He says normally he might see Benjamin on his phone, but he never would have thought his roommate would be accused of going on an app like Meet Me to meet and solicit children for sex. 50 year old Anthony Smith was working up in this man bucket you see here. He was working in that preparing to paint this building when he hit the first power line you see there of the three. Janice, what have you been able to find out about this new charge? Mary, I've been able to find out a lot. First of all, I'll tell you, Brittany Jones and her attorney knew nothing about this new charge when they walked into the Duval County Courthouse today. This is the statute 847011, and it prohibits a certain act, certain acts, in fact, in connection with what's considered obscene material. This is in connection to the video that she posted online, the video that was recorded here inside of this courthouse. According to the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office, this this is the home where that man was found with a gunshot wound. But one of the questions is, where is the gun? They have not been able to find the gun that would be connected with this particular incident. Tark slightly, just a little bit. If you look over to my right, you'll see there is a little bit of a flow of people finally coming in, the arrivals coming in, but they have been delayed. In fact, they've been delayed so much. I want to show you right here on the board, whether it's an arrival or departure, you'll see in the yellow, every last one of them has been delayed. If you look up at the top for the arrivals, you'll see, for instance, that you may have had an arrival that was supposed to happen at noon. Now it's arriving at 350s. Mary Ruthine Tukes was the backbone of her family, and now they're devastated. They're asking the question why of her boyfriend. Why would a man who said he loved her hurt her? Then they found in that home 99 pots of marijuana plants. But this all happened just across the street from a daycare. We're finding out more information about why police came to this home and began digging into Russell Tillis's yard. If you take a look, though, for me, another part of this story, his neighbors are very upset because, as you can see, from left to right of this entire property, it just looks like a bunch of garbage. Today's town hall was called Resistance Recess, and they have this chair here reserved for the Congressman John Rutherford saying they're disappointed that he's not here to hear their concerns. A crowd of chants. Where is John? And a difference of opinion. Weekend Collide PG-13 is a typical tale of what a man will do to save his girlfriend's life. Cute. That's about all you'll like about this movie. Right here, you see two hostages that just left, got out. This is when you see Nicholas Humphrey actually surrendering. He throws his gun to the ground, 
puts his hands up in the air. Eventually, he then gets on the ground, lays on the ground. And just a couple of moments after that, you're going to see SWAT come into the video. You see it right there. You see them coming in. They're going to walk into the door and they're going to surround Nicholas Humphrey. They come in from every entrance possible. Spoke with the mother throughout the day while her son was held hostage, and then again after he was released. Janice? When we first spoke with Latarsha Schumann earlier today, she was in a panic, wanting to know if her son was safe. He is a bank teller at Community First Credit Union. She was worried about him. She received a text message where he then said, I am okay. That's all she knew. She still hadn't seen him yet. And then later in the day, we had heard from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office that his name was mentioned as the gunman. That was a mistake. Patriots Day is rated R just over two hours long based on the true story of the Boston Marathon bombings. I personally left the theater in tears after seeing the courage of those that survived, those that protected the community, and those that died. In Glynn County, where we have learned from the Glynn County Police Department that a father was driving while drunk, his license was suspended, and he had his two children in the car. Today, I had an opportunity to listen to the 911 dis dispatch call that was made by his daughter pleading for help asking for police to find out where she was. Four Jacks starts now. New tonight, neighbors speak to News for Jacks, describing the moment this West Side bank was robbed outside their front doors and how their lives won't be the same. I was telling Rebecca earlier, I had a chance to go to the beach and it was really windy. So when I recorded it, I said, hey, folks, you know, we get sand blowing in our faces, but some folks are going to be getting snow. Exactly. And those temperatures mark the beginning of change on our way, affecting your work week. Winter is not over, and this will be the longest cold stretch of the season. Rebecca Berry, she's been tracking it. And this just in, in the past few hours, we've learned police have arrested two men wanted for murder in the shooting death of a man on the south side. Detectives say Keith Hines and Deshaun Robertson shot 30-year-old Dante Alston last November. He later died at the hospital. The White House is expected to reveal tomorrow a new executive order on a so-called entry ban. The order will revise a previous version that was blocked by a federal court. White House officials say the new order will address legal concerns raised by federal judges. We take a look back. On this day two years ago, this is what you could see right outside your window in Jacksonville. Certainly not the snow we're seeing up north, but still a rare sight for Florida. Well, it's Sunday night, and that means it's almost time for the Sunday Sports Zone. Brian Jackson has it all, including something very sweet called the Sweet 16. Yeah, that is. That neighbor lives just doors down from the bank where this all happened on the west side. He says he saw an unfamiliar car in the neighborhood, but he didn't call police. It turned out to belong to the robber. A local breaking news alert just into our newsroom. We have just learned in the past 15 minutes that four people, including a child, have died in a crash involving a semi truck in Alachua County. But first, police are searching for a person who killed 62 year old Deborah Lyles. She was found dead on Thursday in the carport of her Panama Park home. It was the play of the season. The Gators beat out the Wisconsin Badgers in overtime on the basketball court, 84 to 83. And to say every second counts, well, that would be an understatement. President Donald Trump says, do not worry, after his health care proposal was pulled. He says a plan can still be put together. On Friday, Congress failed to pass the Republican health care reform. Now, in a town hall today, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said the president needs to reach across party lines and work with Democrats. The president says he is working on the new bill. A consumer alert. Automaker Nissan is recalling more than 56,000 of its Murano SUVs due to a power steering problem that could start a fire. Happening right now, we are monitoring three wildfires in northeast Florida. Flames have been spotted in three different counties, Flagler, Putnam, and Nassau counties. West Mims wildfire is now 17% contained. Evacuation orders were lifted for Charlton County. The fire has scorched more than 150,000 acres. That is nearly six times the size of Disney World. In the Lackawanna neighborhood, police were called to no Street this afternoon following reports of gunshots. They found a man in his 20s shot multiple times. He was taken to the hospital and is now in serious condition. 
Here's a look at the next steps in the search for a new superintendent. On Monday, school board will hold a special meeting. That's when an interim superintendent will be named. After that, the search for a permanent replacement will begin. The search could take some time. When VD came to Duval County in 2012, it was an almost year-long process. If you're headed to Atlanta this work week, you're in luck. Traffic on Interstate 85 is now back to normal. After six weeks of heavy commutes caused by the fire and collapse of I-85 bridge, all lanes are reopened. The first day of spring is in less than 30 minutes, and that means warmer temperatures, we hope. Mark is standing by with a look at your first taste of the new season, Mark. Now, taking a look at some of the scene, and this is an aerial view. You can see the bus with the man inside. This is where the standoff happened for four hours. There's a SWAT van pulling up behind it. 